one. Hello, you guys, and welcome to the Woman's Cave. Thank you for letting me have that, Winona. I appreciate it. I thought because I'm driving that you're letting me have Why? There, okay, we are not in our studio. If you cannot uh, tell yeah. that, it's we're, very odd. We're in D.C., which, you know, we don't particularly like to drive in D.C. It's like Los Angeles, but with taller buildings that aren't earthquake prone. There you go. Yeah, it's like that, but yeah, it was more aggressive drivers, I think. Like, yeah, was, definitely yeah. more aggressive. I, I think every time we visit L.A., I'm like, if this were a D.C. driver, this would have been over. But They would have already <laughs> cut me off like 17 seconds ago. Okay. exactly I, and thank you guys so much for taking that moment to pause and be like should i speed up because that's the moment dc drivers attack that yeah, yeah. should i is when we get attack. over like, <laughs> driving here is not about <laughs> the possibility of kindness it's about attacking at, at opportune moments <laughs> <laughs> anyway that's about all the banter we should do today yeah, because jade, i'm driving and yep. i'm trying to pay attention Sorry. jade needs to pay attention so you guys we have books Oh, yeah, we have a whole bunch of books. The And I, oops, the and I Thought series. Um, yeah. That, I, would, I didn't mean for you to jump into the conversation. Oh, I want you to pay attention. Oh, Walmart. Okay. Um, anyway. No. So we have books. The And I Thought series. And I Thought Divorce Was Bad. Being Grown Up Was Easy. I did my journey Oh, wait, wait. Check out the And I Thought Divorce Was Bad on Audible. Josie has does a great job reading it. There you go. The Misfit Guide. Sassy Sweat Leaves the Crooked Footprints. Misfit Guides. Cocktail Swarries in the LVD, and yeah, LA, I'm still waiting for you to make, and I thought I had it all figured out into my TV show. Thank um, you. Never do that. <laughs> never do that. You guys can catch us in Las Vegas because our writer's retreat is coming up on Seriously, October the 7th the and the 8th, and that is Jade's Road Rage, just in case, you know, background noise, Road Rage. Oh, sorry, y'all. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. I'm going to be But I'm anyway, in moving on, because I don't normally do this, so moving on. Wait, you forgot to say. You got, um, guys, like, if you're going to buy it, I thought being grown up was easy, wait on it and get the audio book because it's so much better. Okay. You can get everything we have on the audible.com, amazon.com, and, and barnesandnoble.com. Uh, now, we have a wonderful guest. Wonderful guest, <laughs> would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, I am Candy Washington. I'm the founder of 1214 Media, and we create inspiring content across digital and publishing platforms. We have a great book called Sugar Pills, 10 Days to Awaken Your Inner Power. You can grab that on Amazon and Amazon Kindle. There's also the podcast, Sugar Pills, uh, your weekly dose of inspiration to transform your mind, body, and soul. And then I also do a lot of fun social media stuff with fashion, beauty, and lifestyle brands. And our next phase is we are developing our first TV series and film, and we're looking for active um, collaborators who are passionate about bringing stories to life on the screen. That would be me. No. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. joking. <laughs> oh, yeah. Life. Oh, yeah, and I also do um, on-camera hosting and acting. I have a really fun digital series that I'm shooting in October called The Salon. I booked that for season two. And then I'm also acting in a new feature film called A Rose in Concrete. So I'm really excited about that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you have an amazing life. Okay, so this explains... <laughs> This explains why your website is so awesome. Oh, thank you. I do that myself. I taught myself how to code. So. <laughs> oh my, wow. Okay, yeah. I need to, like, most people, like, they need to get like me. I need to get like you. Go. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell that by her website. Yeah, I can tell that by your website. Oh, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. So can you tell me, how did you get interested into me and making content at all? Because at right all? now, yeah. 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 I, I actually started like way back in the day before, even before influ the name influencer was a thing, I started with blogspot.com and it was only Facebook. So I was like at home, like on holiday between um, school and I was just bored in my room and I was looking at all these different other fashion blogs and I was like, oh, I could do this. Like, let me just do it. And I had this archaic URL. It was like HTTP colon backslash backslash candywashington.com.blogspot.com. It was like, it was crazy, but I would just take photos off the internet, didn't know anything about like copyrights, IP, whatever. And I was like, one day when I graduate from school, I'm going to go to LA and New York and I'm going to wear this sequin dress and all these events and I'm going to do fashion and beauty, blah, 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 which I didn't know at the time, but what I was doing was visualizing and actually manifesting. Um, 
but I didn't, I didn't have that the language for it then, but that's what I was doing. And so I just started doing that and started posting on Facebook. And this was before Twitter and before Instagram. So I was just like this little girl, like getting after it. So that was kind of my introduction to content creation and really having um, social media to be a platform to share my ideas and what I want to do. Uh, can you guys hear me? I hear a little bit of back noise, but. If that's not okay, um, so that's kind of what st started me on that journey, and it was just really having a platform and a community to share things that I love and things that I do, and it just took off from there. Oh, that sounds amazing! So I'm, I'm assuming you were a fashionista from like way back, right? <laughs> So like when you went to school, everyone was like, yeah, I need those clothes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I would style my older, I'm the youngest of five girls. And so I would style my older sisters. I'd be like, no, 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 no. You're not wearing that to prom. Like, let me get you together. And then um, with my friends, I'm definitely the one they go to. They're like, what's, what's trending now? What's cool? What's awesome? Like, what's fun? But I actually went to school for philosophy and government. I went to Georgetown and I was on the pre-law track. I was going to go to law school. I was going to do uh, entertainment law, but I just sort of realized I didn't really want to be a lawyer. I wanted to play one on TV. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so after college, I decided to move to New York and I worked in fashion at Louis Vuitton. And that was when I really learned about storytelling in a bigger way. So I was in the intern at their uh, public relations department. So I had to oversee the showroom. So I had to learn quickly, how do I create a visual story so when the editors come in i don't have to give them this whole spiel they can just look at the collection and understand the story of it so if someone comes in from l and they're like oh we're doing our winter wonderland collection they obviously see the clothes that will fit into that storytelling so that's when i really got an education around visual storytelling and then writing storytelling and then how to pitch your ideas for other publications so that was kind of my trajectory into um into into actual like fashion and being meaningful and storytelling and then that's kind of what i see myself as i see myself as a storyteller and a content creator content creator, whether it's a video on Instagram or a photo or a blog post or my book or acting or hosting, it's all just telling stories in different mediums and forms. Okay, wow. Jay. Wow. Okay. So you just get all the way over. So my question <laughs> is, as you were doing the visual um, storytelling, is that yeah. what caused you to want to write? No, I was always a writer. So I grew up writing. I grew up writing poetry and plays and just I've always loved writing. So to me, writing was my first form of storytelling. And then once I got into fashion, I realized I could tell stories visually as well. Like think about like visual merchandisers for stores. They tell the story of the store and the window. You know, like Christmas, Christmas time, holidays, you walk down Saks Fifth Avenue and you just see all the visuals and the store. So visual merchandisers, they tell the story of the brand through visual effects. And that's the same thing with like a film. That's why you can have a side silent film with no words and still totally understand what it's saying or like a commercial or an ad or a video or a meme or a gif it's just telling that story with the medium and it's given time and so i really learned like the power of that and how you want to convey like those things through a visual medium mm -hmm. so then you were just naturally going to make that leap since you're already like a writer slash screenwriter you know if you're writing plays you're close enough to a screenwriter <laughs> Yeah, like you've got well, I... I would actually say, um, just to be completely like transparent and vulnerable, no, it was not a natural leap at all. So I wrote plays when I was younger and that was like fun and great. And like, it, they were like Easter church plays and me and my family would like perform them. It was, it was like Medea goes to Easter play. So <laughs> that was good. But when it came to the craft of screenwriting, that was totally new to me and totally foreign. And I felt very insecure about, I'm not sure if I'm able to write a screenplay because that's a very different beast than writing articles, blog posts, narrative form. Those are two different things. Like I'm great at narrative. I can describe a look or something that happens for like 10 pages and it's just like, get on with it. But with screenwriting, it's a very, it's a, it's a skill set. Like people go to school, people study screenwriting. And I really respect and honor people who are great at their craft. And so I was very nervous to get into it. So 
I, the first thing I did to get into screenwriting to transition from just doing narrative writing was I did coverage for other people, for other people's scripts and coverage is basically when you read a script and then you provide back to the author, the strengths of the script, um, it's weaknesses where it can improve character breakdowns, the synopsis, the genre, all of that. So I wanted to get an education on what the anatomy of script writing was before I just jumped into it. And then I also had to get my own confidence up to say, hey, I'm going to write a screenplay. I'm going to write a script because there, there are so many different types of writers. And I respect all crafts. So I want to make sure that before I'm like, hey, here's my screenplay pilot, you know, come invest in work with me on this, that I have all of my things in place for that. No, it was it wasn't it wasn't as easy as it as it sounds. <laughs> oh my goodness! But nothing ever is. No, no nothing, nothing worth ever having. Is. Yeah, nothing worth having ever. That's the trick. Once it looks effortless, you know how much time, energy, sweat, blood, and tears we put into it. That that's absolutely. That's I'm, what makes I, you I'm a pro. Yeah, I'm hundred and ten percent behind that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because when people want to do what we do, they're like, "Oh, but you look so cute on like in the pictures." <laughs> And Girl, tell that story. bye. Tell that story. <laughs> <laughs> so like, okay, Jade wants us to tell us to tell the story. So we went to to England, and people no, like, never mind. people said, oh, you know, oh yes, we want to get interviewed and all this stuff. Like you guys do. And we're like, come on, on this tour with us. And they're like, it's grueling. You guys never look like it's grueling. And I said, yes. This is why I have an obsession with coffee because I never. <laughs> So it's like, what they didn't understand is our day starts at 7 a.m. and ends at 11 p.m. Right. Totally. And then you wake up and your day starts at 7 again. And they were like, this is hard. And I was like, they're like, but the pictures, they don't look hard. And I was like, yeah, because pictures are moments. But I didn't and, say that out loud. Yeah. Uh, well, now we're saying it for the whole world. The pictures are moments. <laughs> well, the, well, the picture is really, it's, it's a culmination of all of the work, right? So mm -hmm. to me... So to me, I make it synonymous to like a pro athlete. When you go to like the Lakers game or like the Patriots or like whatever, you know, like your number one team is, when once they're playing at that level, it looks effortless. They're, they're throwing the football. They're doing the basketball. They're doing blah, 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 blah. Because it's their job to make it look effortless. But nobody sees the hours of practice, the, the diet they have to go after, the lifestyle, waking up early, like, you know, getting injured and all that stuff. The literally hours and hours and hours and hours and hours that goes into that moment of, you know, the playoff looking effortless on the court, you know? So to me, I think that's the same thing when it comes to being an entrepreneur, being a creative professional, you have so many hours and hours of work, dedication, training, blood, sweat, and tears that go into making it like, oh, here's my book. Here's my movie. Here's my interview. Here's my Instagram. But, but people don't, people only want to look at the glory and not the guts. Oh. Okay, yeah, talent like, like manager that. said the exact same thing. And I love yeah. that. People want to look at the glory and not the guts. Is that right. a trademark? Because that should be. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> you should totally have that. I am glory and guts. I, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, okay, I have to ask about the billionaire. Yeah. Blog. Oh yeah, so it's a big, it's a billionaire blogger society, and so the billionaire blogger society is a platform that I use to connect with other creative professionals who are seeking help with personal branding. So, and it doesn't have to be like fashion, beauty, lifestyle. It doesn't have to be like one of those like sexier industries. It really could be anything. If you're like, oh, I really want to start my own dog walking business, but I don't know where to start. So I could be like, hey, we'll put up an Instagram. You know, start sharing. You know, value. Like here are three tips to keep your dog healthy you know email me if you need you know someone to walk your dog on you know Sunday mornings or when you're out to work or whatever it is um, so it's really whatever you want to be as a creative professional I coach people and consult people on how to create a their online presence and then be a community of people who you can convert into customers and then see how to become um, an expert in your space so you can really get higher fees so that's what i do at the billionaire blogger society and it's really for anyone any creative entrepreneur it doesn't have to be like fashion or anything like that oh all okay. right so you mean like poets yeah like poets like yeah that. okay sure we'll yeah be there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, want me to, do you want to do a flash session? Ask me, ask me a question. I'm not and, I, and, this, and this is a total flash because I, I, I have no idea, like, you know what I mean? So if you want to. Okay. So let's see. Um, 
Don't ask us to do something serious. No. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> um, let me think. Something flashy. Oh, let's see. Personal style for a poet. If they have red carpet appearances. Ooh, Personal style for a poet for red carpet appearances. I would say make sure that you have your your brand super tight on what you're offering so because there's a lot of different types of poets right you have your sort of like earthy crunchy poets then you have your very like i am a phd professor and this is my poetry that i did after my dissertation so i think just being really clear on what your brand is and what your brand message is so think of like you know, three or four attributes that des that describe you as a poet. Um, I would think about, um, you know, even like a color scheme or animals, maybe get like a mood board together. So you know that at each touch point, whether it's your website, whether it's your Instagram, whether it's your book cover, it's all in succinct and cohesive to you as a poet. And then you want to take that and apply that to what you're wearing on the red carpet. Like for me on the red carpet, I usually wear like sequins, leggings, you know, like a little like uh, dress skirt. And that's kind of like my like staple kind of look, kind of like easy beasy bow cheek with like a New York twist to it, like a nice leather jacket. So I think just not trying to be over the top and sensational, but just trying to be true to what your brand is. So if you are that crunchy granola poet, you know, maybe you're gonna, you're not gonna wear like fur, you're not gonna wear, you know, something super racy. But you can wear like a nice like blazer and button up, maybe like a nice pants suit or whatever. So I think it's just really staying true to your brand and what you're offering without trying to impress anybody else. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, so um yeah, I know what I'm wearing for the awards next and two days. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, with that being said, oh with that being said, don't be afraid to take risk as well. Because you're allowed to take risk and evolve. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. Jade, this one time we um we were supposed to get her an invite to a really cool place. Yeah. Yeah. And Jade was like, I'm wearing oh, Converse, red Converse with our nineteen fifty <laughs> styles outfit. Okay, it was the freaking Oscars. Will, Will. Wait, Will. it was the Oscars? And she was going to wear Converse. Uh, I okay, there's, there's a time and a place. <laughs> <laughs> and the Oscars is not the time nor the place. <laughs> I was just telling you that I had, I had like, no, I'm granted. You, you could wear Converse like the People's Choice Awards. Like, well, we're not wearing Converse at <laughs> the Oscars. No, we want, we want to. It was the Oscars dinner. It wasn't that serious. It was like an after thing. So yeah, it is. Yeah. So anyway, I was like, you can't do it. And then our manager at the time was like, yeah, she can. And then she gets a silver Sharpie and just write your name on it. But we didn't go, so it worked out great. What did you yeah. go? So, Next time, go. Half the battle is showing up. You're in line, it is. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, let me stop being professional. Let me start, start being professional. OK, no, so where do people find you on the internet? Yes. So if you want to connect to me, you can head over to candywashington.com and that will give you all of my fashion, beauty, and lifestyle tips. Uh, for the Billionaire Blogger Society, you can head over to thebillionairebloggersociety.com and you can see um, and sign up for my library of free resources. You can get a ton of free resources there and then also book time to consult or coach if that's what you want. And then you can head over to Instagram at candywashington, Twitter at candywashington, and on Facebook, candy.washington. And you can connect with me on all of those platforms. And feel free to email me, too, if you have any questions at info at candywashington.com. Okay, the reason I differentiated the internet, because Jade is over here looking like, mm, you're so old. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> because it's okay. I assumed I assumed you had events coming up where people could see you in person. Oh, that's what you meant. Yeah, no, no, the internet oh. is fine. Oh. <laughs> the second question is, where can people see you in person? You have things coming up, right? Where can people see me in person? Um, okay, never mind. I lied. <laughs> I thought I saw it. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought I saw an event on your website, and I was like, oh. I'll that was that probably out. an event recap, maybe? I'm not sure. Oh. See? Mm -hmm. Now I look mm -hmm. dumb. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. No. You do not look dumb. You look as if you were preparing, and we're just having a conversation. Self-talk is very <laughs> important. Don't ever call yourself dumb again, because you're not. She's so sweet. I love that. <laughs> I feel like we should have one of her, like, constantly. Always. <laughs> um, 
So I want to thank you so much for coming by our silly yeah. show and <clears throat> for not being upset that we're doing this in the car. Yeah, yeah it's fun. Driving in cars with cool people. There's like five move, like TV shows, like driving in cars with comedians, coffee with comedians. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> So I want you guys to remember that you can catch everything that your ladies are doing at andwethought.com. And when you go to andwethought.com, go to the ladies tab, go to the, actually the top of the page now. Oh, Ooh. what? Even you designed our website? That's exciting. I think I did. Okay, what? I might have been wrong. But anyway, <laughs> there are the charities that we proudly support. So please, you guys support them too. Add time, money, whatever you can to them, even just educational resources. They, will, they would appreciate yeah. it. Also, <laughs> yes. Since I have the camera on. Oh, come on, Willola. <laughs> please, I'm driving. I have a cop behind me. Can we just please behave ourselves? Oh, never mind. I'm behaving myself. There's a Thank cop. you. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you. So you can catch what I normally say at the end of any other episode. <laughs> so remember that. <laughs> remember that wisdom is all around you if you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love. From Jade, who's driving without the road rage because we're out of the city in Wilona. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.